All right, today I'm on the elliptical machine as I'm doing this episode. We're on episode number 12, and I'm going to talk about sugar cravings, also cardiovascular training, why it's essential for you to stay consistent in your training, and how are some of the ways, what are some of the ways that you can actually burn off these urges for sugar. All right, so let's get started. If you have yourself a machine, a cardio machine, a bike, um, a coming bike, spe- a spin bike, a roarer, a, a rowing machine, a, an elliptical, whatever you got, you want to stand in place and walk and do this with me, feel free to do it with me because it's only going to get us healthier, right? All right, like I said, welcome to the show. We are on episode number 12. Time is moving really fast, and I love it. <sighs> my goal is to get my heart rate up. I'm going to maintain what's called steady state. I'm not going to go crazy hard, so you're going to hear me breathing a little differently as I go through this process um, and doing this cardio. Now, a lot of you have been asking me about this crazy sugar craving, and I want to attack that today. But before I, ta- before I attack that, I have to keep on reminding you all, I am doing my own advertisements, I'm doing my own stuff, so remember to head on over to donovangreenfitness.com, become a member today, $14.99 a month, you get access to 16, 16, 12 to 16 brand new workouts uploaded every single month. You would get access to our group calls, our community of extremely strong and powerful people. You get access to your own customizable calendar. You get to do so much within the group for only 14 bucks, 14.99. So get on over there. If you don't want to do that, you can support by clicking the link that you see on the YouTube channel, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Donovan GF. Once again, buymeacoffee.com forward slash GF, okay? Now that we got that out the way, thank you in advance for your support. Thank you so much for, for being a part of the program. So let's dive into this thing. Let's, let me get my notes together. And we're talking about fighting sugar cravings, right? And we're looking at ways that we can cut down on the sugar. Well, first of all, let's talk about what sugar can do to you. It can kill you. That's what sugar can do to you. Sugar is the leading cause of many diseases or diseases. Sugar kills your brain cells. Sugar will destroy your organs. Sugar taps you out when it comes to your function, your daily function, your energy absorption. Sugar is something that is most of us are wired for sweet. We're not wired for, for, for bitter. We're not wired for salt. We're not wired for sour. We're wired for sweet, and sweet does something to the brain, right? And when you begin to crave sweet, these carbohydrates, they stimulate this feel-good emotion in your mind, right? So when you are going through something stressful, you ever notice that you reach for that piece of cake or you reach for that ice cream, you sip on that milkshake, and it's like, oh, God. And you, I mean, you literally go, oh, God, this tastes so good. It's so good. And then all of a sudden... It's like a high, right? It's like you just feel like you just sniffed some cocaine. Like you just finished tapping some dope into your arms. Well, guess what? I've never sniffed cocaine in my life, but I know people who have done it, and I see how they reply. I've never done drugs, okay? Now, I'm going to take it back. I've done drugs because sugar is drugs. (laughs) Sugar is actually one of the biggest drugs in the planet. Did you know that? So when you see somebody walking by, like in the hood, When I was growing up, I see crackheads walking by. I hear people say, oh, I never want to be like that. I never want to be a crackhead. Or you see an alcoholic walking by, and I never want to be like that. I never want to be an alcoholic. Well, guess what? You are like that. You are addicted to sugar, which was actually the first drug ever invented by man. (laughs) I bet you didn't know that. Sugar is a massive drug, and that's why sugar is in so many things, and it activates these endorphins. And once you release these endorphins, they calm you, they relax you, they make you feel just amazing like you're in the cloud, like you're in cloud nine. That's what drugs does, right? That's the reason why people get addicted to drugs, right? Because they're chasing the same high that they felt the first time and they want to replicate or experience that same high as before. So that's what sugar does to you. Sweets just taste amazing. I mean, nothing tastes better than sweets to me. I mean, every now and then I want salt. 
but sweet. Just feel good. But what's this, once again, it is killing you. Too much of it is killing you. And also, it makes you gain so much weight. I'm talking about not even over a year. I'm talking about, think about where you were five years ago, right? And then look at yourself five years now. I don't care if you're in the best shape of your life. If you eat a lot of sugar and you have indulged in weekend parties, gathering with your friends, and you, in your brain, you've been doing it every now and then. Guess what? Every now and then adds up to a lot. Let's say you ate 500 calories excess worth of carbohydrates, right? And you did that for one week straight. So that's 3,500 calories. They say, they say that 3,500 calories equal one pound of fat, right? Now, let's say you did that one week straight. You didn't work out enough. You didn't hit the cardio. You didn't hit the weight training. You didn't do any of that. You was just sitting down, laughing, giggling with your friends and doing whatever. That's almost a pound of fat you gained in that week. And then you did that again the following week and again the following week and again the following week. That's 14,000 extra calories that you ate. That could be four extra pounds that you gained, uh, four extra pounds of fat that you gained within a month's time, right? You see what I'm saying? Now, imagine when you equ equate that to all of the, the weeks that goes by within the year. How many weeks we have in a year? Is like 52 weeks or something like that? Don't quote me, because I, I haven't said that in a long time. I don't even keep track of that. But imagine you doing that, and you're at four pounds of fat once every month. And when you times that by 12, you have 48 pounds of fat that you gained in a year. In two years, you can be double that amount. So you see how fast that goes. Now, sugar, not fat now. The fat that people say don't eat, don't eat fats, it makes you fat. That's nonsense. Sugar. And I'm going to stand on my grounds, okay? There are people who will disagree. But take it from this guy who researches a lot. I'm giving you the simpler terms. Sugar makes you fat and sugar makes you dumb. Because sugar just keeps on destroying what? What did I say in the beginning? It, it destroys your brain cells, okay? So right here it says, Americans eat an average of 17 teaspoons of added sugars per day, according to the American Heart Association, which recommends limiting added sugars to about six teaspoons per day for women and 19 spoons for men, okay? So let's talk about some of the ways that you can actually uh, cut down on sugar or, you know, break away from your sugar addiction. Magic word again, addiction, okay? The first one is don't skip your meals. It's simple. When you skip your meals, you tend to want to start to crave more things. And when your body begins to crave things, you're not fueling your system correctly. So that means that you are now going to eat the thing that's going to satisfy the hunger and also satisfy the emotions of hunger. So when you eat your meals and you, you have healthy meals, I'm not talking about just had, you know, having anything. When you eat your meals and stay satiated, stay feeling good, not full, because I don't want you to eat to get full either. But when you know you had your breakfast, when you know you had your lunch, when you know you had your dinner, and in between that you had your snacks, you're least likely to want to binge on sugary products, okay? I'm going to go through this list pretty quick. Another one is to eat natural sweeteners, natural foods that's sweetened naturally, right? For example, a fruit. Fruits are just natural sugars. Yeah, you might have the taste for a Snicker bar or, or a, a Twinkie cake or whatever, I don't know, whatever kind of sweets you want, but opt for more natural sweeteners, trail mix with raisins, right? Do stuff like that. And you can even make your own natural sweeteners, your own natural stuff with natural sweeteners like maple syrup, agave, honey, and make your own trail mixes, make your own little fruit snacks. Like if you really want sweet, you can take some green apples, you can take some berries like blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, combine all of that stuff in a little baggie, and then drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on there. Maple syrup goes a long way. And there you go. You have your sweet, but it's a much more healthier version of your sweets, right? The next thing that you should be doing is stay hydrated. A lot of people don't realize, okay, if I'm not drinking enough water, then 
my body is starting to crave things. I'm starting to deplete my cells. Remember when I said, don't skip your meals, you know? Same thing goes for hydration. If you are depleting your cells, then your cell starts to crave things. And when it starts to crave things, it's trying to find the thing that's gonna give it some type of boost, some type of energy to make it feel alive. Because the brain doesn't want you to die. The brain's job is to pr protect you the whole time so you can stay alive. So when those receptors start getting the messages and it's saying, hey, we need to get something here right now, right now. No, we have no time to waste. You're going to reach for something sweeter rather than a, a, a bowl of vegetables, right? You're going to reach for the cake because it looks more appetizing and it's going to fuel those endorphins, right? It's going to fuel that feel good, that, that feeling great. You want to feel good. That's what sugar does. That's the trick of sugar, okay? The trick of sugar is like a good friend that, well, somebody who pretends to be a great friend that you share all of your secrets with, you tell them all the ins and outs of your life, they get to know everything about you, and then they go behind your back and they start talking about you to other people and telling your whole damn secret to the world, and you have no idea. But in your mind, that person is the best person on the planet, right? And that's what sugar is. It pretends to be this great friend, but then it goes behind your back and start killing you. <laughs> yeah, I can't say the word killing you any more powerful. It start killing you. That's what it start to do, yeah. All right, so drink the water. I'm talking about throughout the day. You don't have to consume a whole lot in one shot. You don't have to do that. As long as you are taking sips throughout the day, you're fine, okay? You might ask how much water. Well, they say to take your body weight times, divide it by two, and you times that by an ounce or whatever, the, I forgot, uh, two, what's it, 2.2? I forgot the formula now. My brain is not even thinking about the water portion the water piece, but if you take your weight divided by two, you get that in half, that's how many ounces, there you go, that's how many ounces of water you should be consuming. So if you're 200 pounds, you divide that by two, you get 100 pounds, you should have about 100 ounces of water. Now remember, that's just a little formula. I have a lot of things that happens in my head, lots of formulas that I, I can recall, recollect right away, and some that I have to sit back and compute like a robot, recollect it, can't remember, right? But it's okay. Next one, get sleep. A lot of us neglect our sleep. I used to be a big neglector of sleep, but I realized that as I'm maturing in life, sleep has become even more important for my recovery time. When you're not sleeping, you're up. And when you're up, you become bored. When you're doing nothing. If you're watching TV, you're still doing nothing. If you're reading a book, you're still doing nothing at night. Your brain, your body wants to rest, but for some reason, you're staying up. So then you start to automatically go into your refrigerator, your refrigerator, you go into your, your pantry, you start to look for things, you start digging for stuff. You, 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 you look beyond the certain foods, but you start to look for the crackers. Oh man, where's those crackers at? Where's that peanut butter, right? You want to reach for that slice of banana, or, or better yet, you want to get that donut that you had hidden away. Oh, there goes those, there goes those cookies. I, I think I want to have those cookies. You start to crave more sugars. So take your butt to bed early and stop wasting time because when you're not sleeping, once again, you're depriving your body and your body will start to gain more weight. If your body does not readjust, if your body does not get a chance to sit back and say, let's reset, then how's your body going to do what it needs to do? How's your body going to do what you want it to do? Which is get rid of all the excess fat, you know, get healthier, remove the disease out of your system, clear your conscience, right? Increase your energy, build more muscle. If you don't get the rest, then all that stuff goes down the drain. Because when you're tired, your body starts to crave sugars and you begin to make the bad choices. All right. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. Sugar is definitely a bad problem. The next one is to watch out for salty foods. Now, it, even though salt is completely opposite of sugars, when you consume a lot of salts, for some reason, your body begins to want to crave sugar. And it's just weird how that, how that happens. Your body wants to crave sugar. And when you look at it, it's like, but why is my body craving sugar? What, what's the reason why? Salt would do that to me. Well, guess what? Salt is actually a great way to increase 
your blood pressure if you have low blood pressure. But when you eat the sodium, the sodium does something to your blood pressure where your body wants to find a way to limit that feeling, that feeling of pressure going through your system that you might not feel, but subconsciously it begins to break down and all of a sudden you want something sweet. Once again, the endorphins, okay, the drugs. Remember we spoke about the crack, the cocaine and all that stuff in the beginning? That's what the sugar does. It, it starts to crave things and it's, it, it feels like it solves all the issues in the world which we know it doesn't, okay? The next one is to plan ahead. I made an entire podcast talking about meal prepping. When you plan ahead, you have your meals situated, you know what you want to have. You know what you're going to have. And when you implement your macronutrients, which is your proteins, your fats, your carbohydrates, and of course your water in every meal, then you know that your chance of deviating from that plan is minimal. To me, that's the biggest one, is to plan your meals and don't step away from it. So in the morning, you have your breakfast. You might wanna have two scrambled eggs. That's gonna be your protein, right? With some sliced avocado, that's gonna be your fats. With a big cup of spinach, that's gonna be your carbohydrates. But there's fibrous carbohydrates or fibrous carbohydrates. People pronounce that differently, right? And if you wanna have a little bit more carbs, take some blueberries and eat along with that, a half a cup or a full cup of blueberries. That will be your breakfast. Then for your lunch, You have some some fish, maybe some salmon, with some more green veggies, along with a sweet potato. So you have your fats from the salmon and protein, and then, and don't don't get me wrong, you get protein from from the greens too. And then you have your greens, and then you have your potatoes, which is gonna become your carbohydrates. See it? And you're drinking that water along with it. And then dinner comes, you know for dinner, you're gonna have yourself a nice big salad with maybe some baked chicken. And there you go. In between that, you have yourself a little bit of trail mix, or you might have a, a, a green apple with some peanut butter. Planning your foods, you get to satisfy these, these um, urges, and you get to stay on track as your body gets healthier, as the weight begins to come off for you, and as you begin to feel better and better. Let me increase the resistance on this elliptical. That's what I need to do. All right, there we go. Now, the next one is to add the protein and fiber. See, protein and fiber helps to absorb the sugar and helps to prevent your blood sugar from spiking, which will cut down on the urges and the cravings for more sugary stuff, right? So it slows down how your body absorbs that sugar and it helps you to increase muscle and reduce waste out of your system. Because we know that fiber, like when I eat, when I eat, when I eat like a, a bowl of oatmeal, I'm going to the bathroom like in, in the first 20 minutes or so. I mean, they say that it takes you about two days to really digest the food that it passes through your system. I guess I'm an alien because for me, I eat, that, I eat the freaking oatmeal, I'm in that bathroom, okay? So f- the fiber, oatmeal is high in fiber. So have your protein, make sure you have the fiber and you will feel the difference. You're not gonna really wanna have the, 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 all these crazy cravings, right? And here goes one that you might not hear a lot of people say. When you have the cravings, give in sometimes, give in. You want some chocolate? You wanna have your milkshake? You wanna have that piece of cake? Give in to it because you can depend on, like I'm gonna use willpower and I'm gonna pass on it and do this. And you know what? Yeah, you might do it today and you might even do it tomorrow, but what's gonna happen is you didn't satisfy that hunger and that hunger is still calling you and screaming at you and just telling you like, yo, let's go, man. And then when you get the opportunity, you're gonna binge. So to avoid the binging, just give in and move on. You want that piece of chocolate? Have the chocolate and move on. Just don't live guilty. Don't live your life feeling guilty and feeling like you just let yourself down because you're a human being. Listen, me, when I want cake, I'm gonna have the cake. When I want a milkshake, I'm gonna have the milkshake. Most of the times though, I'll tell you, I'll make my own milkshake at home. I'll, I'll create, my, I'll put a banana, peanut butter, I'll put some plant-based ice cream, or, or I use a protein powder, a vanilla protein powder, mix everything up, make it really cold with ice, and I'll add like, you know, maybe a, 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 a little sprinkle of chocolate chips on it or something, some cinnamon, some, um, some vanilla extract, and let me tell you, it tastes delicious, and it's way more healthier than me going and actually buying 
an ice cream with all that extra sugar that gets my belly big. I don't want my belly big. I want my belly feeling nasty and just like I'm pregnant. Okay, I'm a man. I don't want to be pregnant. Okay, I don't know what's going on in the world now. They took them out. They're showing men who are pregnant. Mm -mm. I don't know what the heck that's going on, but that's another story. <laughs> a man pregnant. Get out of here. What, what, the, what the hell? Where, where are we headed to? Okay, I have to, have, I have to go off track for a little bit, right? That's okay. That's what I do. All right, so just remember that, okay? And also reward yourself too. When you're managing sugar cravings and you reward yourself, whether it's a large reward or a small re reward, just remember why you're working and why you're doing what you're doing. And every time you accomplish something, just give yourself a pat on the shoulder. Give yourself a heck yeah. Give yourself a well done. You see what I'm saying? Like you don't have to break away from this. And I believe that um, ex-church girl is the one that asked this question last in the comment section. But I got to see this for so many years that people have been asking this question. So when I, when I tell you I want to ask these questions, when I ask you to ask questions, I'm going to make, I'm, I'm reading these stuff and I'm going to follow it. I'm going to listen to it. So that's what I want you to practice. And then also the last one I'll tell you, slow down. I have it right here. Slow down. It says, focus on, sh on cravings and think about what you're eating. Suggest, suggest, um, Little simple things in your life. You know, try to find ways to deviate away from the sugar craving. Why are you having that craving right now? Ask yourself the questions, okay? Once you answer those questions, you'll be fine. Once you slow down and you eat the foods that you already have planned to eat, you're going to feel great. Don't feel desperate. Don't feel like, oh, my God, I got to do this. You only feel that way when you were not planning. So slow it down. Take a little breather, right? Relax a little bit. Step away from the, from the sugar, and just ask yourself why. And then sometimes ask yourself, okay, what is that going to do to me right now? If I have this right now, what is it going to do to my performance at work? How is this affecting me in my sexual life? How is this affecting me and my kids? How is this going to make me uh, a better person? How is this going to help me to memorize things better? How is it going to help me to reduce dementia? How is it going to help me to fight cancer? And if the answer is no, it doesn't help you, then don't have it. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not remember what I said. Let me just clear it up. Remember what I said. Sometimes you got to give in. I didn't say to give in all the time. <laughs> Don't give in all the time. And this does not apply to like, back to what I said about when I did the comparison about crack cocaine and all that stuff. Yeah, when you're going, when you're going hard on drugs, I wouldn't recommend for you to just give in because you're, you're, hey, that's just a different plan. It doesn't sound that good. But when I say give in to a piece of chocolate, Give into a piece of cake, that's fine. But don't give into a little sniffing. Don't give into a little needle. And don't give into any of that, okay? That's just a different level, okay? Now, <laughs> I'm going to give you another one because there's so many ways to fight cravings that I could just keep on going, but I know we have limited time. I'm, I'm literally almost over my time now. So go cold turkey. If you have the energy and, the, and you are wired to go cold turkey like me, I go cold turkey. When I went vegan, at the time when I did go vegan, right, when I was vegan, I decided cold turkey. I don't want to eat nothing anymore. And I love, my, I love my jerk chicken. I love curry chicken. I love baked salmon, right? And at that time, I used to love eating oxtail when I used to eat, like, red meat. But go cold turkey. Just tell yourself I don't want to have none of this crazy sugars. Now, keep in mind, you, you need sugar. I'm not saying that I have none, but not doing any of that add additives to coffee and to your lemonades and to your teas. And I'm going to put some sugar here. I'm going to put some sugar on the cake that's already sugary. So just, just go cold turkey. You can do it. All right. So anyway, that's it. Time is up. I've been on here for some time now. I'm feeling good. This is what I want to talk about. Also, steady state cardio. You don't have to go hard. You don't have to go crazy. Find yourself something that you can do steady at a, at a simple pace that you're still activating your cardiovascular system and you're still increasing that energy. You see what I'm saying? So I touch on that really short. I'll make a complete video about that. As a matter of fact, I don't even need to make a video about that. You see me right here in the elliptical. If you're listening to the audio, then trust me, you're in the right hands, okay? So leave the comments, buy me a coffee. Don't forget, I want to hear from you. Help to spread the word. We need to get the show to grow more and more and more. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.